What's good, y'all? My name is Dylan Green, and this is Real Notes, a space dedicated to blurring the cultural and artistic lines between rap and film. I'm here to chop it up with everyone from rappers and producers to journalists and video directors about their relationship to movies and how, if at all, film inspires their craft. My first guests of the season are Phoenix Trio Injury Reserve, rapper producer Richie and producer Parker Corey. We spoke about Taiwanese director Tsai Ming Liang, Pig, Nicolas Cage, Danny Trejo, Point Break, their chemistry as a group, the creative process behind a handful of their videos, the response to their latest album by the time I get to Phoenix, and of course, countless stories about the late, great Stepha J. Grogs. Come fuck with us. What's cracking? Welcome back. Uh, it's season premiere time. I've been, I've been asleep. I haven't been asleep for a month, but I've been gone for a month. Um, things are dusty. Uh, my voice is dusty, uh, but Real Notes is back. Season two. I can't believe I'm saying season two. That's pretty nuts. That's um, thank you, <laughs> Dylan, Cinema Sai, uh, Dylan Green. I, I I got a lot of names. Those are two of them. I, I do a lot of things. I was we were talking about a lot of things off camera just now. Um, but like, yeah, I can't really think of anybody. I can't I, I can't think of any two people I'd rather be kicking off the second season of this shit with. Um, uh, I, I don't even know how to introduce y'all. Like, just, just um, you know, um, for, uh, former trio, now a duo out of Arizona, making some of the uh, some of the most wonderful, some of the most wonderful rap music coming from anywhere. Like, I, I, I've, I've, I've been, I've been, a, I've been a real, I've been a real pusher for these dudes for a while, and mm. I'm happy, and I'm happy to see, I'm happy to see that everybody else is finally here. You know. DJ Booth article with the photo with the on Twitter <laughs> where they said why is everybody, <laughs> why is everybody in injury reserve and then the biggest response was I mean look at them and it was the photo that they used I was like oh man oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah with you with the taper and shit yeah <laughs> that's oh. still a trio though yeah of so, course <laughs> always. Yep. Always forever. It's injury reserve. I I I I didn't I didn't say it, but you guys got, got no, it's okay. This is this is what this is all about. It's you know, Nate, Nate, um, Richie with a T. It's always so weird for me to call you Richie anywhere else, and then I just call you Nate 90% of the time. Like yeah. I, I never get over that. It's the worst. And of course, Parker, Parker Corey, you know, man behind the boards, creative visionary. <laughs> Both of y'all are creative visionaries, but like welcome. Thank you all for doing this. This is uh, this is crazy. Like, thank you. Thank you for coming on my shit. Bro, it's beautiful. It's full circle. This is uh, it's I don't know. This is amazing. We can talk about it more. We can talk about it more. But it's so cool that you have this. Bro. It's, it's so cool. Yo. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I'm happy I have a space that's mine. I'm, I'm, I'm so happy to be writing everywhere else, you know, especially places that pay me well. Thank you to everybody who pays me. But like, yeah, I'm, I'm just happy to have a, I'm happy to have a space that's mine and to have y'all come on and talk about something that's not necessarily music. I mean, music will come up, but like this is I, 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 I feel like everybody likes movies and we're here to do this shit. Mm. So, um, so let me ask y'all the first question I ask everybody who comes on here. What's the last movie or TV show that you both watched um, that you had a strong opinion about? Mm. Strong opinion? You got Parker Corey, the one arm assassin, ready. To <laughs> block him. I don't. Uh, I don't need like like positive or negative. Oh, just strong opinion. <laughs> just, just exactly, on, just baby. strong. <laughs> I don't. Um. Hard. I, uh, I really uh, days by by uh, like Chai Ming Liang Liang. It's like just the director I'm obsessed with. That I finally like committed to like sitting down and going through all of days after like three or four tries and just getting like too uh, anxious and like pulling away because it's very very slow. That that was like yeah that one was like full tears like this is this is this is it like i don't know nothing about it what is it exactly um he he's like a a director from taiwan that is i think one of the the i don't know like figureheads of like that like 
slow cinema is the term they throw around a lot. It's just like movies that are, I guess, a lot slower. Um, few cuts, few dialogue, all that. But he's kind of been like working for a long time. There's some weird movies like throughout that, like that are like musicals and it'll be like very slow and then it'll burst into like a musical number and really interesting. But uh in the past few years past decade i think he's made like digital has allowed him to like push it even like that much further like takes her that much longer uh it just feels that much freer and and days is like his most recent one from like 2021 2020 um and it's just a story about like two people one is someone who he's filmed for like every film he's made. And then the other is like a new actor that he found that's like a cook, I think. And I don't know. It's like, it's just incredible. Like the last half hour is just like, I don't know. Yeah, it's incredible. Where'd you is watch it? The Z, E, or Y, S? Y, S. So, because you said going through days was crazy. Uh, bars were like, <laughs> oh, no, I'm sorry, saying, bro. No, 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 it's all good. I was just, I was just wondering where you watched it because I, I like, I'm interested. Now I'm looking at it. It's from, yeah, it's from 2020. Um, mm-hmm. It competed for the Golden Bear at the Berlin. For, yeah, wow. Like, yeah, it's true. Uh, it was on movie. I think when I finally saw it, I had to do like the VPN. Like, I think it was only on like, in Mexico, but I think now it's on the U.S. one too. Ah, like, okay. He did it before it was on the U.S. one. You know, what I mean? <laughs> yeah. that's kind of hard, honestly. Like that's like like that's almost like having to mess around with like region locked DVDs and shit. Like like make sure yeah, you have yeah, the right yeah. DVD player for that. Like <laughs> so that's like necessary. Like there's a there's a website that's called What's On Movie, and it just shows you everything that's available like in their whole discography or whatever and uh then you just it'll show you which countries it's available in and then you just go edit Surfshark and and you're in damn yeah you yeah you might have to hook me up with that later honestly <laughs> I might I might need that <laughs> mm. what's it called Nate what about you what was the last thing what was the last thing you watched that you that fucked you up maybe that's I don't know yeah well, not necessarily fucked you up, but just no, like, I was my all my film, all my film responses are going to be such a level below Parker. Like he's he's barring up right now. We're no, really all, son. no, no, no. Um, I just I finally saw a pig because it's on Hulu. Um, and I thought that was honest. It's funny because everyone was telling me it was really good. And I, I thought it was even better than I thought it was going to be. Mm. Uh, yeah, man. It, I thought I, it's kind of it's, it's have you seen it yet? not yet i'm mad at myself because i can't i can't find it you don't gotta do all what he's talking about surfshark vpn (laughs) it's hulu.com baby like all right and only national nationalism like um no but uh it uh it was it's really good this is great i finally watched the last dance too oh man oh man i gotta finish it like oh really yeah where are you at oh first episode Oh really? Yeah. Yeah. No, it's actually, it's actually really good. Yeah, I just, I just, um, I just, I just get so caught up and just like I'll start things and then leave them and then go start like, like especially if it's like a, like a, I just finished, um, I just finished the fourth arc of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure and I was gonna start the fifth, but I, then I started like four other shows, yeah. <laughs> and I just like jumped through movies and like, I'm a huge Nicolas Cage guy. So the fact that I haven't seen Pig yet is like really upsetting to me. But now that I know it's on Hulu, I might actually try to tap in tonight. Have you seen the movie um, where it's uh like Five Nights at Freddy? It's like the real version of Five Nights at Freddy. Yeah, yeah. I don't remember what it's called. What's it called? Um, damn. The animatronic shit though. That's what it is, right? I think so. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like. <laughs> oh, is that the Nicolas Cage one too? Is yeah, that, that looks that looks ridiculous. ridiculous. I'm just, man. Have you seen the the Nicolas Cage Nicolas Cage movie trailer? No, I know what you're talking about though. It's I don't know dreadful. what you're talking about. Tell me. <laughs> they, they might like the Nicolas Cage like being Nicolas Cage thing might be like 
going going commercial or whatever. There's a movie that's he's just playing Nicolas Cage, and like that's like the concept of the movie. Oh no 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 no! I know what you're talking about. Yeah yeah yeah. That looks that looks wild. Like he's yeah. just yeah. They'll always get you, man. They're coming from every angle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's he's something uh, else. Like, have y'all seen back? Uh, sorry, what? He's a treasure. Like he's yeah. he's yeah. Not uh, for real. Yeah. Like, have you have y'all seen Bad Lieutenant Port of Call New Orleans? Like the Ooh. cop movie. That's a weird. One. Yeah, yeah. Like I'm 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 a big Werner Herzog guy, and um, uh, I just I don't even know how to like talk about Bad Lieutenant. Just to just to fucking just I, I I I like the iguanas shit. Like just the just the iguana scene and the the um him. He's he's just a, he's just a bad cop, man. He's 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 a, he's a, he's, a, he's a bad guy doing bad things, which is which is not always fun to watch. But like Nick Cage is just on like thirteen all the time, so he just makes it amazing. And uh, yeah, and and yeah, like Werner Herzog is even further out there. Like, I, yeah, like I, I make it effective movie. <laughs> this is effectively what it is. more yeah, or less. Yeah. <laughs> just like have y'all seen oh, sorry not not now i'm in a hole have y'all seen grizzly man <laughs> the documentary he made about the guy uh, yeah. Who, yeah yeah i haven't seen that what a brutal goddamn movie yo <laughs> with the <laughs> the shots of like the what are they called uh the like exam medical examiner or whatever it's the people who do the autopsies yeah um that guy and they like zoom in on him and he's like walking through and he's like staring at it that shit's yeah wow like and then and then the scene where they i don't know why they did this but they play the tape of the guy being mauled by the bear at the very Uh, end of the movie like why why, because she can't and he's like don't listen to this yo you should never you should just destroy this like you shouldn't have this (laughs) yeah (laughs) I don't know why he did like 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 if i was like if that was my family i'd probably sue honestly that was that was like the movie was great and then that happened and i'm just like all right i i can't it's just like there's just some things that aren't meant to be seen or heard by anyone you know he said it himself like destroy this like it's 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 it's, it's like something out of a movie like it's just like oh please don't i hope no one's recording this right now like on some satire shit like oh, jesus <laughs> Uh, but anyway, yeah, Werner Herzog is a crazy guy. Um, I want to. Um, I'm gonna watch Pig, and Nate and I are gonna talk about Pig. We're probably all gonna talk about Pig, but we need. To, I, I I gotta make that happen. <laughs> um, so for the both of y'all, um, what's the first movie experiences you can both remember having, like at the theater, your cousin's house, like wherever, like at like a Best Buy. Like you're like looking at like a Magnolia home theater and you just like saw a movie that caught your attention. Like what's the first movie memory you have? Mm-hmm. I remember getting the VHS. I remember getting to being really little and getting the VHS for the Wiz at the library. We used to have to go to the Coronado library. And I remember mm-hmm. having to walk like my, like I don't think it was actually too far. Uh, maybe we drove. I don't know. You know, you're a kid and uh, you start your the stories start like not even making you know like. But it's this like watercolor. Be, yeah, 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 yeah. No, for real. Like, yo, sorry, sidetrack. I have memories of things where, like you're saying, it's watercolor, right? I have memories of things like playing this Pink Panther com- like computer game at um like the after school program and I, like when i was in elementary school but all my memories are inside of the game like all my memories are the game it's not like me playing the game it's really weird same type of situation you find the game since uh no but this next one i was able to find which was uh this like on like the first mac computers they used to have this little bug game this, mm. uh, it, this game of like bugs walking around getting like fruit or something. Do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> my memories of that are the same type of situation where I'm inside the game because my dad, uh, my dad's wife, she's a, prof- she still is a professor. So she had a Mac, like it was crazy. She had the color <laughs> Mac. So, um, 
I remember that game. But yeah, no, that's that's my first memory is like really getting that in. You know, when you're getting movies like in a public library, that's my first memory. That and then I think of like going to the theaters to see like Fat Albert on Christmas or something like that. <laughs> the the, the Keenan Thompson Fat yeah. Albert. Yeah, like and that was pretty grown <laughs> by then, I think. Right. That's that's as such a as such a crazy movie to bring up. Like that was just like um like I like somebody somebody I know on Instagram shared a story of like an old of an old Omarion movie called like Somebody Help Me. And then I went and like looked through his whole filmography and I remembered that he's in the Fat Albert movie. Mm -hmm. And I was just like I just like like him and Kyla Pratt who played Penny Proud of the Proud family was in it and Cosby was in it like they put Bill Cosby in that movie like that was like 20 years ago like just I don't even know when you say like, Omarion movie you mean a movie that Omarion was on right he didn't he wasn't like making films back then right no, not like not really it was um Marcus Houston directed the movie I got a oh yes that that's out. crazy that's yeah. just crazy. <laughs> Yo, I got. I, I swear that. At what I, age? I swear this exists. Let me find it. Hang on, hang on. Um, so the movie. Yeah, so the movie is called Somebody Help Me. It's a horror movie. Um, from 2007 that was written and directed by Chris Stokes, who, oh, okay. who, who like, yeah. and it, it was it was on BET. Like, so this is like 07. So he All must right, have I been Marcus Houston directed it. I thought he did. That was my fault. I'm sorry. Bizarre. Like I'm sure I'm sure he's done crazy shit like that, but no, no, no. It's just them, like you know, what like Chris Stokes do. Uh, let me see. Um, you got transitioned. To films. You got served. Yep. Mm, yeah. Nah. Like yeah. Yeah. You know, like, you got served is like a fucking trash classic. It's incredible. It's such a such a fun movie and like a weird ad for Denny's. Like I've never seen so many people in a. I've never seen like the like like the Denny's in that movie is always super popping. Like I've never seen a Denny's <laughs> that full in my life. Like why? Well, that makes sense. I feel like I've seen some some full of Denny's before. But is it like I don't know? I don't I don't know how full you're talking. Bro, I had a mental breakdown at a Denny's. Did you? Yeah, I had a mental breakdown at a Denny's um, because I wanted to be a popping rapper. And and uh, someone was telling me about how popping Kyle is, who who was might have been KID <laughs> then, and oh, it was man. like, and it was just breaking my heart, and I was just like, I'm never gonna like do the like make it like, and I was crying and shit, bro. Was that around the time Sex and Super Smash Bros came out, or not? <laughs> bro, come on, man, come <laughs> on, man. I was expecting you to be. That's a crazy one. <laughs> that was that's a KID. That's not Kyle. That's KID. Yeah, that, that might have been like the the first Kyle project, right? No, Sex and Super Smash Bros. No, nah, that's the hip hop shit. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's I, some real hip hop shit. Hold on, <laughs> Kyle was like a, a slight. It I feel went, like there was one in between album was under Kyle, Super, and then it went. Not this one, no, bro. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, but Sex, like you're right. That is Kyle as fuck. That's so crazy. Like, that's no, that's, the heart, it, right? it is the in between Parker. album. Damn, Parker knows this shit for real. <laughs> <laughs> so this would have been probably before that. What year is this, bro? Twenty thirteen? Nah, this is right when it was, bro. Yep. Oh. Anyways, that's fucking wild, Parker. Parker anyway. Yo, what about you? What for you, uh, you, 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 What was your earliest uh, movie memory? <laughs> it's like a really. I think it was um, like you remember, like like obviously, like the blockbuster was like very much a thing. Yeah, um, I think it was like a blockbuster VHS of of a Point Break. <sighs> Hard. <laughs> Sounds like the first R movie, which probably as a kid felt like the first movie um because obviously you're just like taking in like pg movies and all that like as you're yeah. you're, you're growing up you're not i don't know it's hard to to think back but point break first r-rated movie 
I think that was like a that's an amazing answer. Uh, honestly. <laughs> yeah. Do do you remember how you felt about it when you first watched it, or was it just like a, I watched it and I don't remember? That? Um, I remember thinking like the like the. I remember, I remember when you were a kid, you don't think twice about like there being a movie where the concept is like bank robbers that also surf. Like that's that's really like the main point of the movie. Like, which is crazy. like as a kid, it just makes sense and it seems cool. But like looking back, that is crazy. Hey, you so can say wild. we haven't made much much advancements, but you can't get away with that now. Yeah. What, what bank robbers that are surfers? No, you can't get away with that now. I don't think yeah. you can it get away with it on Netflix, but yeah. It was probably just that time where like X Games was like new and like you could just like like it what's like the a current remember when parkour was like you could just throw that in whatever movie? Yeah, like yeah, like yeah. That, but for like more action sports. There was like and and there was like that. I was just thinking about this movie, like it's so crazy. Like two weeks ago, the movie, um, like the French movie with the guy who was like really good at parkour. It was like District B13 or something like mm. oh shit what was it called it was it was else. like it was like something b13 uh um i think let me see yeah 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 so it was called district b13 and the guy who was in it was like one of the biggest uh he was one of like the biggest like free runners and like parkour people like i think he helped like break the shit mainstream a little bit and uh that happened like right after vin diesel did triple x and like the whole like x games thing like really was they were like really trying to make that happen and then it just like didn't and like everyone hated it <laughs> and um but wow like you really just like district b13 was just like a sorry you just mentioned parkour and that just fucking triple x and you just mentioned triple x and that just did my brain man i would <laughs> love triple x bro what yeah. Did you did you see the second one with uh, Ice Cube as his handler or whatever? We don't, we don't speak about that. <laughs> but I do remember watching Triple X with one of my boys, one of my good, good, good child friends, Bubba. And I remember we were watching a movie and he we were on the floor. You know, you're just a kid like it, you just sleep on the floor. We were watching a movie and we were on the floor and he was asleep and his head was like slightly under the coffee table. And I was the only reason I was up was probably to say that I was up later. I don't know. But I remember him violently waking up, like waking up and boom and hitting his head in the coffee table and just going and just laying right back down. Damn. <laughs> Triple X, bro. If anything, man. Yeah. That's incredible. Um, I I did um I slept over at a fr- um I slept over at a friend's house once and like it was I remember it was the night that the teen the first teen titan show premiered on cartoon network and like i was the only kid at the party who wanted to go back to the house and watch the new teen titans <laughs> and like from that point on we like played a bunch of tech in that night and i stayed up i stayed up for 48 consecutive hours that like from like yeah i stayed up for like 48 hours straight and i when i got home I slept for 17 hours. Like I went to bed at like 9 p.m. and woke up at like two the next afternoon. And yeah. worst sleep of my life. I Awful. did that on our first Europe tour. Woo! I'll never do that again. I was literally falling uh, on the floor at the airport each stop because really? that was a crazy one. Oh my it was God, just you brutal. Would... Yeah. It yeah. was like four or five days in a row of playing the show. Going back to the hotel to shower and then having to leave for the airport at like 11 p.m. I mean, there was one there was one where we got off the stage and went right to the hotel and we were it was just it was the, the luxury wasn't there yet. And we were bouncing, 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 bouncing just because of the routing. And I mean, yeah, oh, my God, it was brutal. And, you yeah. know, for nice flights, like nothing like that. Um, but I mean, to you say you did it, it's amazing, but it was crazy, man yeah like that was that was like like real quick real quick sidebar that was like when y'all um that was like when y'all played gov ball and like you came you showed up you hung for 20 <laughs> minutes and then left <laughs> like, it'd be like that bro especially yeah. with the, the flight prices you you mm. could 
that you doing that could save you mean especially your group right the the price. Price. Uh, us nick right. hotel prices you can decide yeah. hey we don't want to stay we're saving money by not getting these two three hotels hey man let's do it man we did that after i i passed out after uh, uh -huh. <laughs> i fell out and i hurt my back and shit and we still had a, a college <laughs> in Pittsburgh to play. And we decided, hey, we're going to fly. Not only are we going to not stay there, we're going to fly Spirit and fly right back. Oh, yeah. Well, because Nick broke it down to us. He was like, here's how much money you will make if we fly like a nice airline. And here's how much money you will you will have after if we do Spirit. Yep. And we were like, you know what? I'm going to have to do Spirit. That was crazy. <laughs> And that was the worst, that was the worst experience ever. Not I said, that, was, that was the worst. That was the most bizarre show we've ever had. Show was horrible. Oh, the, I can't. The, the room was weird. It was in like a black box like theater. Mm -hmm. Oh that, wow! Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was like flat. What school was it again? Carnegie Mellon, I think. Yep. Yeah, and it was like sing and dance for them nerds, bro. Yeah, it was weird. It was. I, I always, I don't know, if it feels a little mean, like, if someone was to stumble on it, but I always felt like we were, like, seeing, like, limbs that had, like, not danced before. Like, the way that they were, it was like you were seeing them, like, get, like, work, like, you're seeing, like, real time, like, movement, like, being, like, it's like, a, yeah, it's like, oh, I'm about to, never mind, man, I'm about to go too far on it. But yeah, no, and it was crazy, and I was off the craziest pain pills. And you know, for me, like that's really yeah. kicking my ass because of my back. And then Code Orange was there, and that was the first time uh, I'd seen us live. It was, and I was like, in <laughs> well, then, I remember changing. I, I mean, they're like obviously they have notoriously like uh, aggressive shows and stuff. Like first time we saw them live, people were like climbing up trusses and shit. Wow, like, <laughs> that's like, crazy. There. So having seen that, and then we do this show, and at one point the pills were the were there were definitely getting an eight, and he was like rambling about. I think Tesla had just come out, and there was a <laughs> lot of hiccups with that and the label, like some major major problems. Um, and so we start before we performed that, he was kind of like talking about it, and it it was kind of it was pretty bizarre. And it, the, all that cements it is we get off stage in Code Orange. I think it was Jamie was like, dude, that was the weirdest thing I've ever fucking seen. Like, he was like, <laughs> what was that? Oh, man. And it was just us on a flat floor. Yeah. Oh, there was like, they, they were going to call, like, we moved a gate out of the way because there was like a four foot gate between us and the crowd. Like. And it was just weird and we moved uh, it and then, people were gay yeah yeah and then like the people throwing it like tried to get the cops involved yeah oh yeah it was crazy. Bizarre. damn <laughs> that's that's all so much i vaguely 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 remember grogs te texting me about some show in pittsburgh <laughs> y'all y'all might have been like y'all might have been going because i don't think he like told me any of that but like mm -hmm. he definitely like told me like oh I'm like going to like play some show in Pittsburgh like we're yeah, all like, that would be I, it I, yeah yeah probably about it I mean like the market I mean we I mean that's the only time we played there mm -hmm. so yeah man man Mac Miller's birthday was yesterday shout out to Pittsburgh wow, just, just, wow, just, wow, just, wow, just wow, putting wow. that putting that out there <laughs> just put that out there um before we move on something you mentioned like fucking ten minutes ago um not being able to call not being able to make a movie like Point Break, it made me because like the whole surfer thing. You ever see Surf Nazis Must Die before? No, that sounds fire though. It's kind of crazy. Yeah, it, it's it, it's about zombie Nazi surfers that like a bunch of people need to go kill. It's pretty. <laughs> it's pretty loose. <laughs> go find it if you can. It's like one of those Every like B B like uh or, yeah okay like yeah. A, what's it. Yeah, revive B movie revival type vibe. Yeah, okay. like like the poster is the poster is like is like somebody in like a SS uniform like on a surfboard on a cresting. It's fucking crazy. It's 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 oh, crazy. Let God. me see if I can find it. Is that, What'd you say? Is that hyperpop? <laughs> sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, sorry. No. 
<laughs> is that genre hyper pop though? Like when you're saying like, <laughs> like, like, uh, you know, what I, like, is it though? Like, there's some threads. There's yeah. definitely some threads. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> that was badass. Yo, let me see. Let me see if I can share the poster real quick because I just got the. Uh, can I share the file? Yeah, there it is. Y'all open that and let me know what you think of that. That's the poster for the what movie. <laughs> oh my god, you sent us a download. Oh, it's a download. My fault. Yeah, never mind. Forget it. Forget <laughs> surf, it. Forget it. Forget it. Look, forget it. Surf <laughs> underscore Nazis dot JPEG. <laughs> JPEG. That's what I'm looking at. Right now. Hold on. Hold oh on. My god, son. Chat. Nah. Oh, that's in my like folders now. Wow. Oh, I, I I'm maybe sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry to anybody who's searching Parker's computer. Serve Nazis, not JPEG pops up. <laughs> Wait, so is it actually old? It's old. It's from 87. Uh, oh, okay. that's not hyper pop. No. Oh, yeah. Sorry. No, 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 no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it, it's from 1987. It's a, it's like Surf it's like a true blue. <laughs> <laughs> you still have the chainsaw through the board to make like the rudder thing? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> Yeah. Oh yeah, this is a trauma movie. Duh. Of course, of, of of course this of course this is that. Yeah, it's the fucking people who made Toxic Avenger and shit. Yeah. Of of, of, of course it's on that level. It's crazy. <laughs> Sorry. I just I just I just thought about that. This is delivery this of is, that in the chat with the JPEG download is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, only here. Only here. <laughs> um, so while y'all were growing up and internalizing all the you know, just like taking in media, like was there were there movies for the both of y'all that made you fall in love with film? Like not even in like a purely artistic sense, but just like was there was there w- w- were there movies that kind of made you like feel more connected to the art of filmmaking or just like that you like really resonated with and was like, oh, this is more than just like a thing I can watch. Like I really like vibe and fuck with this. I hope that question makes sense. Makes complete sense. Mm-hmm. That's you, P, right there. <laughs> uh, man, I, I don't, I don't. This is, I would say the bit, the big one. When younger, and it's not like a completely negative reaction now, although it's definitely with a lot more. Um, I don't know. There, there's, but definitely like like the Wes Anderson stuff when yeah that makes like sense, a teenager though. that's like yeah, yeah. probably because it's so forward with like mm. blocking and everything that it makes you slightly more conscious of like it's so it's not trying to appear re- realistic or whatever so that probably helps ignite that thinking I feel like that makes complete sense because that's what i was i was actually going to say the opposite of that i was going to say i can't think of anything at all because i can't think of anything that was and maybe it's just because I wasn't looking at film this type of way, but I can't think of anything where I was looking at something and I was seeing the spectacle and not just like mm-hmm. the media. And like you're saying that was very full, like in front of your face about it. So it almost mm-hmm. like it, it's 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 I don't know when when I don't know, I wasn't consuming film like that, really, uh, to be honest with you, not until getting involved with Parker and then just doing stuff on our end. And then I film wasn't one of those type of things where I was thinking much about what's going on other than what I'm really consuming. I don't with music. I don't know if maybe it's just because my like my dad had a music background. So I knew, you know, it's like what's making the wheels turn. But for film, like I was never thinking about what was making the wheels turn. Maybe it was just maybe I wasn't on YouTube watching you know, how people were doing type of things. But I didn't really start thinking about that at all until uh, we started shooting music videos, honestly, like at all. And that's fine, honestly. Like, you know, like it doesn't, like that's one of the things I love about movies is that like it doesn't even have to be like, you can appreciate movies in a way that's not like that kind of like really in-depth, like just just like that process. You can just kind of like consume it. And it's just like, oh, this is cool. Like, it, like, like, I feel like film and music are really cool and intuitive and interesting that way. Just like right. they like they mm-hmm. make impressions on you in ways that you probably don't realize you won't realize until, you know, like years later. But like they just you can just kind of take them in. And to what you were saying about Wes Anderson, like that's, you know, like I feel like that's a 
that's valid and it and like i just i saw the i saw his last one the the french dispatch um a couple months ago and like for like i kind of recognize what you were talking about with the uh like like i've always recognized that style that he has but it was like for some reason it was that one movie where i was like this kind of looks like a diorama and like I, I thought i thought back on it and like all of his movies like even especially stuff like the grand budapest hotel and even like moonrise kingdom just like they just look like dioramas that he like made and like the the figures are moving and it's like uniform and tight and, and like yeah. and and you're like something like fantastic mr fox which is literally just like stop motion and shit. But um, nah, like that's like he's he's got a style that's like really distinct and it's it's he's a lot. I have a lot of feelings about what, what he does mm. sometimes and just like the way he moves and operates and <laughs> but like but the movies when when they're cool they're really really cool. I like the French Dispatch a lot. Like I thought that was good. I love Fantastic Mr. Fox and Ten and Bombs and shit. But like. I think I think that's a decent place to start, you know. Like he's someone who's like, this is a film, you know. Like right, that's, yeah. that's that's that's, I think that's yeah. Why, yeah. That's why I get what Parker's saying, right? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, me too. Like, did you like Parker? Did you have like? Did you have a specific favorite, or was it just kind of like Wes Anderson, just like a general aesthetic thing? Um, I when I I mean this is like, uh, well, it's probably one of the most like distressing ones now but it, it was probably the like life aquatic which <laughs> why is, like, why is that distressing now there, uh there's a lot of i don't know there's a lot of imagery in that one specifically that's like fucked upon revisiting um right but uh i think that one stuck out at the time i don't know i think i just like the underwater thing like, i think that was like a fun visual like the ocean um which is also yeah um but royal tenenbaums was probably like the most like oh like this is like affecting scenes like this is yeah Yeah. but yeah yeah when you said the water shit i just thought of spy kids so (laughs) (laughs) spy kids is definitely like strong at one point in the water i just saw the spy kids submarine and then they're making the mcdonald's with the yeah the little th- god <laughs> I, I, yo I, tr- I i tried to go home and do that like after the movie like that's how young i was when the movie came out <laughs> but i was just so ready to just like eat fucking fries out the microwave it was so like crazy. nothing is just like anytime there's any type of underwater submarine i just always think of spy kids every single time <laughs> that movie that 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 movie is iconic i don't think like i feel i feel like people clown on it a lot but i think i think uh i think robert rodriguez deserves his flowers for that like that was mm-hmm. that was something man like between the thumb thumbs and the fucking underwater shit like get, 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 like get... So what you spy kids online is like its own little like subculture at this point yeah it made that impact like, I think they're yeah, bringing like, it back or something. Yeah, because they made it. They made a fourth one like a decade ago. Um, mm. But like they're like they're like they're, they're gonna bring it back like now. That'd be cool. Kind or, of. I might be I might be confusing it with Shark Boy and Lava Girl. So. Yeah, no, nah, they're bringing Shark Boy and Lava Girl back. That's so wild. Oh wait, no, 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 Spy Kids reboot in the works with Robert oh, Rodriguez. Uh, January twenty sixth last year. Reboot though. Oh. I want to see grown niggas. Sorry, I want to see the grown kids. I don't want to you see can, you. You can curse on here, bro. I don't care. I'm about to be pure. Like I'm. I feel like I'm never a purist. But when it comes to spy kids, though, like come on, man. Don't mess. Don't mess with my. What's his name? Junie. Yeah. <laughs> don't mess with my boy. Come on, man. Well, he's such a distinct face too. You can't. Yeah. Like... Machete, oh, because now Machete can really be Machete. Now it's like, oh, man. <laughs> Wait, is that in the same universe? It is. is. He's their uncle. Like, uh, <laughs> that's the same universe, bro. I didn't know like, that. That's the real cinematic universe. <laughs> Honestly, yeah, the Robert <laughs> Rodriguez. <laughs> Someone needs to stitch together, like, the Danny Trejo's cinematic universe. Like, every film that he's in is, like, 
one cinematic universe. I'd like that. Project. Nah, we need that. He's he's a treasure too. Like him and Nicolas Cage are like national treasures. I just like like anytime he pops up anywhere, I'm happy. Like I'm just happy people like care about Danny Trejo. And it kind of took Machete for like people to really like tap in that way, which is kind of wild. Like a, now he got now he's like bar yes. tacos on lock. Yeah. <laughs> he's like the he's like a LA celebrity equivalent of like the sports stars like opening up like uh car dealerships like he's just doing that on like a massive scale in los angeles right and really? the product is good yeah i haven't or no i don't think i've had it actually yes you have bro loma vista used to feed us those things bro oh that was yeah 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 those <laughs> they used those to feed us those things man that's that's okay. what they were drugging us <laughs> <laughs> the drug in us is the, is the hey, that's funny, bro. God damn, that's funny, man. That's goddamn hilarious. <laughs> <clears throat> so, like, so, like, while y'all, so, like, while y'all were kind of like growing up with movies, like, when did music come into the picture for both of you? Like, when, when, like, when, what, well, what, well, like, not even, not even about like making it, but just like experiencing it and like just kind of being like i like music when did that happen for you i mean so sorry what's is there any connection to the movie situation with this one or are we just going straight tunes um straight tunes for now and then we're gonna bring it back before we yeah, before no, we dig i don't know man i can't for me personally i i can't even think of as corny as it sounds like i can't even think of a first memory like it just kind of has always been an extreme interest of mine and um doing it myself i mean i remember asking my grandparents for like a little drum machine when i was a kid and and never figuring out how to use it and then i remember we sold the drum machine for like 80 dollars oh the dentist office that was that one a juggalo it went for 80 dollars now when you think about it it might have been more than that and a juggalo bought it wow yeah and he was like that's not like derogatory juggalo right no, no, no. <laughs> i don't think so no, no, no. i'm just making sure uh he bought it this he's a confirmed juggalo by the way because <laughs> we ended up finding the whole local phoenix juggalo scene but he was like yo bro i've been looking for this like this hat you know because that's real like certain drum machines have their own sounds and he was like this has like this sound i'm looking for and like that was magic to me you know <laughs> what i mean that was beautiful. Like he was really digging for this. And it was like a weird, like it, it was like an Elisa, right? Wasn't it like a pretty like, like I don't, you don't really see those like in use. Nope. You don't see the, like, you don't the see SP, like, yeah. Yeah. No, 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 no. But yeah, no, that I, I, you know, I tried, I wanted that, but I didn't start rapping until um high school just cause my boy was really good at rapping and he wanted to have a rap group and, but yeah. That's it. I mean, oh, let's go for more now. Wow. How much did they go for? I don't even. Yeah, how much? Or wait, uh, never mind. So, new, they go for 160. On reverb, they go for 90. I feel like I got it off for like 80 bucks on Craigslist. Yeah. That's crazy. That thing was collecting dust for years, like probably a decade. Mm hmm. He pulled up on us, and he gave us the key to the Juggalo podcast in Phoenix, and we were tapping in for a minute. That's kind of mm-hmm. hard. What? <laughs> like, <laughs> but it makes a lot of sense that like that would be a strong, strong scene here. <laughs> Does it? <laughs> I mean, I have no idea. That's just so like you gotta come you know, out here. You still haven't been out here? Not yet. I'm uh, yo. You gotta come I'm, out. I, I might be I might be trying to come out to see the Van Buren show because it's like it, it's like happening oh. right. It's it's happening right before my birthday, so I'm I'm might make that happen. Oh, when's your birthday? March eighteenth. Uh, because it's happening like right before my birthday. Oh damn! When's your birthday? The sixth, and I think it's on the fourth. Oh Man. shit! No. Oh. Because have you met Grog's kids? No. Oh yeah, I, bro. you gotta come, bro. Yeah, I, I I haven't I haven't met anybody like. Oh yeah, you gotta come, bro. Man, that would be oh. fine. We'll talk about that. We'll yeah. talk about that. that'd be really cool. I just want to make sure that the show happens. <laughs> no, of yeah. course, 
that, yeah, that's the most important part. Like, man, like, in all safety, though, like in all safety. Yeah, Parker, yeah, what's, yeah. what's your first memory with, or what's, what's what was the question again? Man. Yeah, 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 yeah music, man. <laughs> music like, memory shit. Yeah, mine's like too notorious at this point. I feel like I, I said it. I don't know. I don't know, yeah. bro. We'll still be Wait. asking every you questions. Yeah. Yeah. After thirty thousand times, yeah. Well, and then and then you say like the same truthful answer to everything, and they run the same thing in everyone, and then it's like uh, yeah. it becomes like this like cliche that you're trying to like really like commercialize this little factoid of your 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 uh, <laughs> right. your experience. Yeah, no, nah, we um, we. We can keep it. We we can keep it if you know you know if you want. Like not, <laughs> it's yeah. all I mean, like, it's like gloriously late. It's not like yeah. I think it it's beautiful like, yeah, in high school. Yeah. Yeah, you know. It's beautiful, honestly. Yeah, I mean it's, YouTube it's, sample it's, breakdown videos that now like seem like disgusting to me. Definitely. <laughs> uh, got it going. <laughs> oh what? Of course, bro. That's that's beautiful though. Yeah. You know, like that, like that era, like like that era of YouTube raised so many people, and I think that's fine. You know, like mm-hmm. there's nothing really wrong with that. Like I said, that shit crazy on a chin up outro. <laughs> I don't gas in myself that much, but the YouTube tutorial bar—it wasn't even a bar. It was just so like I just felt like for our generation, that shit was so real. You know what I mean? Like it was mm-hmm. like at the park, like for real. Yeah. Like just really, like, just uh, like I remember, I remember trying to. Um, uh, my dad was big on Logic. He still is big on Logic Pro, and he was teaching me how to use that. And I would go on and like surf around and look for like old. Uh, I would I would just like look at like Fruity Loop shit and just be like, I don't know if I could do this. Like I love this, but I don't know if I could do this. You know, like maybe maybe like like like, like one day I'm gonna go back and tinker with it, but just like seeing other people do it just just like kind of i don't know i just i just i was just like i appreciate this a lot but i'm yeah, not, I'm not there yet exactly like, bro i feel like that same way. pretty loose looks intimidating to me like i i think maybe i tried once and i like gave up it looks so intimidating yeah like, skip over dylan talking about his dad making beats or <laughs> uh he's he's hey. d- dad uh, <laughs> yeah. Dad just talking about man. Can I get a beat type? Like, <laughs> nah. I mean, I mean, maybe. I don't know. He just, what he is... just like my. I don't know if I told you all this, but my father, my father has been doing music his not his whole life, but like he was in a doo wop group. He used to roller skate, and he just kind of like he just like futzes around on like sample programs and just like makes like he make he make he makes like R and B type shit. That's the type of shit that he likes. Like kind of, mm-hmm. kind of in like that, in like that, like Catronada sort of. It's like Catronada, but a little more tame. And his stuff like, so goes like, neo and like electronic too. Or yeah, he's 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 big on the synths. He loves that stuff. So he just does it for fun. Like he, he just does it for fun. Yeah. Man. Like he's he's seven. He's gonna be seventy seven in April, oh. and he's just like uh-huh. he's he's just a tinkerer, man. Like he just oh, loves. Incredible like i just i wish i could i i'm so scared that i've already like ruined music for myself oh man don't say that you don't know that yet oh that's like so beautiful you said he's you say 77 about to be 77 making beats for fun yeah i need that spark bro (laughs) i need that spark wow you'll find it i know you will like that's crazy man that's beautiful that just made my day i'm so happy to hear that he's gonna be happy to hear that too i'm gonna tell him he's, he's tell, him, right my, tell him that oh yo what's up no. <laughs> <laughs> nah nah i'm gonna tell him that that's so funny that's so funny um before we move on to stuff specifically with y'all um like this oh, wait, wait, yeah let me just ask so like when did like, was there ever a period of time where the two where the two of you like consciously linked film and music together in your head and like saw them as two things that complemented each other? Like it could be something like a song on a soundtrack sounded cool in the context of a movie or just like the way sounds just like 
compliment images or whatever. Like, did, did anything like that ever happen for you? Has it? Um, uh, okay, a fun one that's like very, this is probably like coming at the answer from like now, as opposed to like going back as it was like intended. That's but, fine. Uh, <laughs> I think for a long time, we we kind of had this like natural like purist take on just like not fucking with like the songs for like at least our own music videos like some of our favorite music videos would do that like until the quiet comes like is like the whole album like chopped up and and put into this like amazing thing but for like all of our videos it was always like you cut the images to the, yeah, wow. the mastered song and for the first that we we did an outside video like we shot it a few weeks ago and and <gasps> still finishing it and and this is like the first time i think we've ever opened the sound of the song up is like slightly more crossing over with like fi film um structuring of sound where it's like a little looser than like just putting the images to the song and like Nate recorded like some like natural audio for it that like is like the last like two minutes of the video or whatever and it's just like uh like ambient like sound I guess it's yeah I'm really excited and so th that's like a new a new bridging like finding a little more space between the two that we hadn't quite gotten to to experience before you know what so like the thing is is like and that's and I and the thing is, is like since day one, though, since the second that we really linked up, you know, us three, it was like Parker. It's funny because Parker was uh, in a like a lot of people have like a film class in high school, but mm -hmm. Parker film class in high school. It was real different. It was it was real oh. different. Mm -hmm. They had, they were no, 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 no. I'm not going to go too deep into it, but uh, the friend group that they were doing this at it was actually they were actually a lot better than everybody else and they ended up doing a lot of the stuff for the school blah 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 but while we were doing the second we started doing the ir shit it was like the music videos were very serious and i know mm -hmm. that we're talking about just film in general but the music videos were very serious and it was always a like it wasn't just something it was never just something for a song it was always something to help realize every song you know what i mean like it was and it was since day one like and also yeah. the videos were always good the videos are always was, good you said what p that was like a very strong that was like a point in time where there were a lot of artists that were making whole careers out of having like videos mm -hmm. instead of just like from putting out music mm -hmm. right. <laughs> kind yeah. of back a little. like videos are still big but this was like a particular time for like YouTube, I think. For real. No, that's real. Like we were talking about Kyle earlier. That's kind of like his initial like ground of support, I feel like. Oh, oh hell yeah. And and yeah. they were and and Parker and and you know and 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 Jackson and Jordan Howard, the basketball player, they like we were all very serious about this and they all all had experience with it. And you know, we were you know i mean it wasn't anything crazy but we we're running cameras and because you know, we're in phoenix so there wasn't much to get but we always took it very serious on you know an expression an extension of the songs and then we ended up getting to the point where the videos were an extension of like the album and you know there was because i think early on you're just do, you know you're extending the song and then you get to a point where it's like you're looking at the album as you know this piece of art as corny as it sounds and the videos are are an extension mm -hmm. and they're just as much of a part of the narrative as uh the music is i mean even this most recent record i mean that i mean the videos for us had a lot to do with the story to tell especially knees was like one of the only stories that was like a modern story that we were telling because the music you know we had had for a year but that video was the only video that was a conversation about what we were going through at that exact point in time. So Parker's experience with film and his interest in film has always had an increase, like a very, very big influence on how we do everything for the band. 
everything. Right. And that's like uh, I'm 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 happy we're already here because I because I had this written down like that's one of the things I love about y'all like that's one of the things I loved when I first stumbled across yo back when like the video for that came out like y'all are like a like y'all are a trio y'all are a trio that moves like a collective and like y'all are so like y'all are so um into every single aspect of the creative process like it's not just like it's not just like one of y'all is doing everything it's like everyone's got it's their hands close to in that it. it's close to that parker's <laughs> doing about 80 percent of it parker's doing about 85 percent of it <laughs> and then if this is how it goes parker's doing 80 85 percent of it i'm rapping grog's is rapping and me and grog's are like trading off the hooks Parker is doing most of it, but there's an input. There's input for, like in every single angle. There's input coming yeah. from each other, from everything. It's like we're not like we're, we had gotten to the point where we realized like being in a band and is a lot more than like who does what and like who has like check marks on like every single box. Like, you know what I mean? Right, like right. We know that none of this would work without anybody yo is a good example though that was like right after beast and donation was the first oh yeah we were ever. really into that yeah and parker had this idea of like this like we just saw that we knew that spot in tempe that had that like it was really like specific so random if yeah. you would have passed it you would have no idea because it was just a lot in a house in a front yard that just had like these tropical a small look. patch yeah it like square footage wise it was probably like eight by six mm. yeah. parker was able to make it look like a whole fucking jungle yeah. like, yo like yeah i'm oh, i'm so happy we're here now because i want i wanted to i wanted to run through a handful of y'all's videos and just and, and just like go through that process like talk to me more about the video for yo because like that was because like i know that was my that was my first introduction to not just like you guys visually but just like that was the song that made me go like what like who is this like so like what, what was it like making that video and like turning that area into the fucking jungle like you did <laughs> well the two things that like i remember most fondly with that one are one, I think that was like our first time ever, like actually running like uh, grip equipment. Mm -hmm. Like we we didn't really know what we were doing, but we knew we wanted this like big one like light source for it. And so I think looking back, it must have been like at least like a two k, four k like tungsten. I think mm. I, I I wouldn't have been able to tell you at the time. I think we just like rented like a big light. Um, but I'm, I'm trying to like remember what it looked like and that's probably what it would be now. Um, so it was just like a big film light that we had pointed at it. And even, I don't know, even just like renting something like that for your first time is definitely like a learning experience. Um, and then we, we were able, that gave us that like circle that we were able to like play with kind of in post like coming in and out and all that um that was definitely like one of the most planned ones mm. at that point in time where we kind of mm. like had everything nailed down um what, oh oh and then the other fun thing was that lot we weren't quite sure it looked like an empty lot but there's like another house like next to it with like no fence and so to try to get some permission i think it was adam like tried knocking on the door he tried like wow. he didn't get any response but i guess the person was just very reclusive who lived in that house because he left like a note like saying hey we were hoping to like film here tonight i hope it's not like gonna cause any problems blah, blah. and we came back and i think the note had just been like put back out and it had like the words like okay at the bottom of it like someone did just like, <laughs> it, okay um but that yeah yeah i remember it being cold i remember it being the first it was really cold we yeah. ever had people on set who we did not know like we had people who were like models for the video and yeah and, the, yeah, and, and we, we failed that part didn't look good when we did it so i felt bad mm -hmm. and that was hard like that was hard like working with exterior people and like you know you're on their time and you're you know just like learning these things like early in the game 
that you're yeah. trying to manage but it's like we had built the infrastructure basically up to there where it's like you know we had already had experience running things but at this point jackson had this this interesting really because remember this is dentist office day so we're working in the dentist office and jackson who was shooting all of our stuff at that point he actually had a deal with the orthodontist that our that our the room that the was the studio was connected to so he basically what he did was the guy gave him the camera an fs 700 i remember this and like it was like Jackson or they they went half on it or something and then Jackson or the guy paid for half of it and then Jackson was going to work for the other half of it so Jackson was doing the videos for the ortho like promotional videos and stuff like this for the orthodontist so it's like we had the camera so it's like you know that movie that video has the slow mo you know that's what the that camera's known for whatever mm -hmm. is the slow mo so we use a lot of the slow mo you know what I mean like it was um it was definitely looking back on it it had a lot of firsts and a lot of like very key things that really helped us really grow yeah. like in the future which is funny because that was that at, if you look at it now i think that's that was the only like post album uh video we did we did we did a post album video for that uh we tried doing it for the next album and we regretted it and we were like we're never doing this shit again and then now we're doing an outside one because now it's like we don't yeah, yeah. The cool things do like yeah, with yo, more. yeah with yo it's nice that you can still look back on it fondly because like i would say from like it feels like the most important things from that would be all the things that would like make me cringe now if i had to go watch it um <laughs> and like but that's important too like right. obviously yeah. Yeah. yeah you know like it, it's, it's it's like that with all old work you know like you just like look back on stuff and like either like mistakes or just like stuff that you thought was crazy and was just like eh. like, like 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 that's you know art is personal like that especially for people yeah. who make it <laughs> yeah. um, even if they had been able to think of like the ideas for the last two album videos like we wouldn't have been able to do them without all of that right, like, right. At all. Like, it wouldn't have been possible right, so right. yeah it's yeah and then uh um i um i wanted to talk a bit about everybody knows because that's my favorite video that you guys have made <laughs> it's 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 like i just like like a is my favorite video of yours b is my favorite grog's verse probably ever and just like i don't know it's like like it's just so simple and just so much fun like it's just a fun ass video like what was it like because it's just like a camera with like the glass pane and y'all just like rapping into it but like, yeah. i don't know i just like that shit. for real one, yeah one important thing from that was probably like a lesson that is difficult but is like we we had spent like what was a lot of money for us at the time like maybe 500 dollars on like <laughs> another video um that we had shot like months before that mm. and then we changed the song it was kind of in the, like we had shot the video thinking this is going to be one of the singles. Let's just get it. And then working on that like mixtape or whatever, like there was a point where the songs like shifted a lot. Mm -hmm. Like we yeah. kind of, yeah, we kind of like opened up from like the, the complete like tribe called Quest Obsession. And like, yeah, we just let everything like turn mm -hmm. like more like loose and like current i yeah. guess with like yeah and everybody knows was like one of the songs where that happened like the strongest mm -hmm. so i remember there was like friends who were like what are you doing and like yeah you're 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 this is both people yeah like just like our little internal like we're all making music like friend group like there was a lot of people who were like no like you guys are messing up like a good song um and yeah. then it became a thing where we were like, okay, this new version, like you can put the video on it and it still works. Like the timing is still the same, but it just doesn't feel as good. And so then we went into like, how are we going to like make something new for this? So that, that, if anything, that was like a lesson and like not being too precious with like what you already have in the can, I guess. And building shit on set. I mean, we built the platform. Oh, remember, oh, we dude. The oh my God god i was thinking about that recently like 
that was so bad yeah <laughs> that was crazy. so dangerous yeah, being kids is crazy like you don't even think oh of my it. god someone could have like died <laughs> yeah that was so dangerous yeah like if someone so, like, was under that like if someone was like fixing the, like someone could have got like their arm like camera was under that so people were changing or like pulling focus and stuff i mean like yeah so that was so bad looking back <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we bought the glass. Like, what did we do? We bought. We were like in the market for the glass. Obviously, yeah, we, we went to an acrylic like factory. Yeah, remember? Dude, we, <laughs> we were so up. much more ambitious back then. I think about that all the time now. I'm uh, like, man, we had that spark. Like, yeah. I think yeah. I have a picture of it on my Instagram. We went to an acrylic factory and like, because we didn't know any math on like what would support the weight, so we just like told them what we were trying to do. Right. And asked if we could see like thicknesses, and they showed us. I think it was like three quarter inch, and we were like pushing on it, and we were like, "I think this will do it. I think this will be like thick enough to support a, a person." <laughs> and- <laughs> I think it'll be thick enough to support. A what did? What is this that we're using? We're using like some type of plastic, like storage. Holy yeah, yeah, it's bad. So scary. bad. I remember. It's so bad. Think about yeah. It's Whoa. so bad. Dude. We're using yeah. some type of like plastic. It was yeah, like like just like garage, like plastic mm. um storage stands. They're yeah. only four things high, no. and we're and then we're walking up on a ladder to stand on the glass. And it's just balanced. There's nothing like holding the glass on. Like if, if one goes, it's podcast, a podcast, holy shit. Yeah. It's bad. It was really bad. Yeah, man. It was Yo, really Parker. dangerous. This is the loudest I've ever heard you talk, so I know you're being serious. <laughs> like, <laughs> no, I mean it was really dangerous. Like thinking back, like look great. I think though. isn't there one? There's a there's a leg missing on one. Is there not? Um, like, yeah. One of the shelves yeah, I'm is looking at it right leg. now. <laughs> yeah, I'm looking at it, I'm looking at it right now. <laughs> if we had Grog's his big ass on that thing too, oh, that's man. crazy. I yeah, Columbia yeah. Elevens on. Woo, this is yeah. good. Man, man yeah, he was like conscious of it. Like, okay, someone get off. Like, it's like we were trying, but yeah, that could have gone real. Like, someone could have got. Point, we did we actually have two people on, or did we edit it so there was two people on? We must have edited it. There's no way. Wow, man, I I miss this is like this is that spark that I that like I'm talking about right here, bro. <laughs> <laughs> we were about to die for this shit, bro. That's incredible, <laughs> son. Like that's the that's that's what this shit is all about. Like I just and and just like y'all are just so into it, and yeah, like you know, it, like, like Nate, you were just saying with the sneakers and fucking like I remember like. Parker's wearing like a white shirt. I think you were on like a white shirt, but like it, it, it was like a college shirt or something, maybe. Yeah, yeah. I wore that. And, I, um, I, I, I wore that shirt a lot at that point in time. <laughs> yeah, you did. Now that I think about it, and um, and, and yeah, like Grogs is in the fucking bape, the red bape shirt, like just yeah, great. Mm. What a what a what a yeah, that was that that was Adam brought that. Oh yeah, Adam styled that. Yeah, Malik was in the video. Shout out to Malik, bro. Play, yeah, that's right. <laughs> wow, yeah, son, that was that like. Like, 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 I didn't know you guys at that point, but I just watched that video and was like, these guys like to have fun and they're not afraid to fucking kill themselves to do it. Like, fire. Yeah. Good shit. Like- <laughs> that, that was definitely, yeah. This is a point in time where we were, like, also, like, so naive, like, I don't know, just new and naive to, like, the technical executions of things. But, like, it was, like, kind of in that, like when people were starting to like really appreciate like hype williams for like everything he did and so it was like us with this night naive like cheap attitude but like just trying to like go for those like kind of images yeah (laughs) yeah right i love it and like and you know i think i think that kind of i think that ambition kind of leads that ambition leads to something like the video for north pole which um Uh just you know, like that was um, it, like there's just something so like it's so understated, but you could tell that there was just like a lot of thought into the way that y'all wanted to make that video and that song just kind of work together. Like what was it what was it like shooting and conceptualizing the video for North Pole? Because I think it's like like 
when I think like, like when I think of videos, when I think of you guys as videos, like that's one of the, I feel like that's like a flagship video for you, for me personally. Yeah, like, oh yeah. people really. It was like, a big like turning point. Yeah, I think. Yeah. Yeah, I bet. Like, what? Well, yeah. So it, yeah. So like, what was it like, kind of like bringing the idea for North Pole to life and just kind of like showing the house like that? Well, it was still like very. I mean. I think I just sent some links to Nick on like some like local like special effects place in Burbank that had like a snow machine like that. Yeah. And like he went and picked it up and it was just like this big tank with like pressure in it and it put out like a foam that looked like snow. And (laughs) that was our like we didn't have anyone who like knew what they were doing with it. We just got like the the professional machine that did it and the rest was us like figuring out how to use it um yeah i think that's been a lot of our stuff really has been like getting the like having the ambition to be like this is what we want to do and we want to make it look like legit um but also only extending that to the point of like getting the tools that allow you to do that and then figuring it out and like sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't um so that's yeah but i mean the house was we we i talked about this with nick a few days ago i still bring it up every now and then that we shouldn't have let that house slip we were that was like a a lapse of judgment on everyone's part um oh, man. everyone yeah because yeah at the time i think we were just sick of it because it was dirty there was too many people but man that was a good if we looking back like yeah that was a good spot to have you went um, there, you went there right dylan oh yeah 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 that's what that, i thought yeah yeah i came through in 2018 when i went out to cali for the first time mm. yeah grog yeah grogs was like yeah come spend the night on the couch and then that, yeah that was <laughs> That oh, yeah, big... you definitely came over because we were playing Tekken and all that. That's why I was like, you were definitely there. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. I beat your ass at first, and then you came back and beat me like 20 times. <laughs> that was a crazy <laughs> fucking night. Man. You know, it's funny, though. It's like we, at that time of that era, like we used to just bring people over and then just be like, yeah, because what we did three videos for that album or for that EP. And we were just like, yeah, this is where we shot this video. This is where we shot this video because we all just shot the videos at the house because that's just like. Yeah. How we were doing it, you know what I mean? But Parker was really like world building at a certain point because it was like it was like to the point where we're like had a lot of options. It did have a lot of options. And what's yeah. crazy is that door that Grog's axe down stayed like that <laughs> until we moved out and then we bought that it. Was, the door. Yep. Yeah. That was all Nick's fault though. Yeah, because it was budgeted. Yeah, yeah, we yeah. budgeted to pay for the door, <laughs> but they Nick never replaced the door, and I uh, I slept my room was right across from that room <laughs> i could walk out and i would be able to look straight through the hole of the door and just see nick sleeping right there every, <laughs> every morning, bro. Every that was that, that was nick's room <laughs> yes that's yeah. hilarious yo oh my god because i remember i remember when i came into the house and i saw that and i was like that's the shit from the boom times three video it just like i didn't realize that was nick's room that's so goddamn funny <laughs> Yeah, and like we snapped, but the one that he did do was when <laughs> <Yeah>. he, <laughs> when we looked up the when we looked up how much it would be to replace this glass. I think that was on set. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We looked up how much it was to replace his glass for his Nissan Altima, and we were like two hundred bucks. Oh yeah, we can afford that for the video. And I just smashed the window for the video, and we just replaced the shit the next day, bro. Damn. That was Yo, that's so beautiful. Like that, like, yeah, it's just like having seen the videos before I came out, like that was just like seeing the little bits and just like the little pieces, <laughs> just everything there, coming. Yeah. Like that's that's that that's so beautiful. Like just that was that was a time. That was that was really a time. <laughs> it was, bro. That was a really like filmic house. Like that house, like was yeah, you could shoot all day in that thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like. Yeah, like I remember, I remember the uh, the interview y'all did for Pigeons and Planes, where you were just in the fucking pool, 
and shit. Uh, yeah. like, <laughs> just like just like uh. the shot they got of y'all in the pool was just so cool like it's just yeah like every everything just like seeing the little seeing the room where the studio was and like where y'all had the vision right. board up right nice. before the album came the like it was crazy like we're tripping like what did we do yeah. like <laughs> yeah man like i would take i would go live there like with like a three other people and yeah. be so content and we'd be able to afford it too the rent wasn't even that expensive back then yeah we eight people it was like four money. grand yeah we just had eight people sp- like in there like split it up because i mean we were lapped up but it was so much room in there that everyone had their own space you know what i mean like no right. one was like it was it was amazing i mean there was a dog in there like it really yeah. worked. it really worked well like honestly and um it's crazy it to let nice location perfect yeah yeah. That place has become like kind of trendy now, if anything. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Probably, yeah. Yeah. I, I, I didn't know anything about Cali when I came out there. I just like saw the area and like my friend came to pick me up the day that I left and and he was like, Oh, like they're out here. I'm like, Yeah, like I, I don't know what this means, but the, the shit is cool. <laughs> like <laughs> that yeah, was just bro. man, yeah, that house was beautiful. That it, it's it's not there anymore, right? Because um I think it's I think there. It is. I think someone lives there. Someone might have bought it. Oh, yeah, okay. I think it's okay. Like, it looks like someone like put some money into it. Yeah, because when we were living gotcha. there, the wall in between us and the house next door, it fell. And the landlord, mm. like it literally the wall, like so we could just look in our neighbor's backyard. The wall fell. And I thought there was a fuck like a bomb went off. It was crazy. <laughs> but was a lot of money cool. that needed to be put into that house. And yeah. it was not real. When we moved in, it was. It was like the only people that were going to move into that place were eight college age kids <laughs> coming from out of town. You know what I mean? Like, even though it was really, I mean, you could trap it out. You could trap it out. But now when you look at it, it's like, oh, wow, it's amazing. But at that yeah. point in time, I feel like people were just looking at things a little bit differently. And I think that, I mean, the opportunity, I mean, that was an easy flip. Like if someone was trying to make bread on it, mm-hmm. it was a super duper easy flip. And I think that's a beautiful someone, neighborhood. Yeah. Like that was one of probably the most beautiful neighborhoods ever lived yeah. in yeah 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 the community was nice everybody yeah. was nice like yeah, yeah. man like, yeah i mean yeah. we were two houses down there's like a case study house with like some like fancy car or italian couple but mm-hmm. then there's like yeah our neighbors were cool yeah man that's there's just a lot of yeah it was like an actually like i don't know those are really nice yeah I don't know why I thought it got demolished. It might be because there's a picture of Nick like standing in front of a bunch of like just like <laughs> bullshit. Oh so, so I saw that and I was like, did y'all tear the house down? Like it's a big oh, ass house. So <laughs> that would have been in a video if we did that. We had so much junk say. <laughs> house. Yeah, we had so much junk in that house from music videos and stuff that he had we had to hire one of those like big garbage things that they drop in front of your house so you just throw everything in there oh like the pods and shit yeah yeah, yeah but for garbage yeah 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 wild yeah. wild so wild, i think wild. he had to like get it out and rent a u-haul and get take more shit to the dump like we had so much stuff in there because we were doing not only were there eight people living there but we shot a lot of videos there and you know i mean we right. did all the stuff there you know so, it was oh, yeah. santa rosa right yeah santa rosa I'm just I'm now I'm on Google Maps. <laughs> yeah. Shit. Um so uh, another um I'm another video, you know, moving on to the self-title that I that I that I think about a lot and just like in terms of just like ambition and just like ideas <laughs> like the jawbreaker video. Like yeah. like holy shit the fucking jawbreaker video. Like I don't know like like I think I, I think I might have watched the bit where Nate has the fucking Jordan ones around his neck. Like like watch that happen like five times when the video first came out. Just like how they do it like on some, <laughs> on, on some shit. Like I know that was like a like what like what went into the Jawbreaker video? Because just like there's just so much going on there. <laughs> yeah, that was a lot. Um, that that's like maybe. Maybe I mean I'm, I'm like partial to the new ones because they're so new and just like happy about the music. Yeah. Like, but of all the videos where I'm like, I'm just happy that this video like exists as a music video and is like so distinct. I think that might be like yeah, a specific like the one that I'm happiest that it like exists as a music video because right. otherwise it shouldn't. 
Like yeah. if we hadn't <laughs> forced it to exist, it would not exist at all. You know? Yeah. Um, First time working with Chris too. Yeah. Who like is incredible. Mm-hmm. He's, he's big time now. Yeah. He's very big time. Not like he doesn't act big not for time. us. Yeah. Not for us. It's yeah. just, he's the real deal now. Yeah. Right. He was the real deal then though too. He was a real deal. Then. Yeah. 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 He was definitely like coming to us with like, just like, cause he was, he liked the music at that point in time but now i don't even know if he has the time to do that man <laughs> like can't he's doing think. yeah and what, and what was his last name viral. again uh ripley right okay yeah okay I, I said did you see the level. like vi- he, he shoots a lot of the megan the stallion videos <laughs> yeah went viral because they had like like a kind of like like the snorry cam thing but it was yeah kind of like focused it was kind of mostly focused on like her ass oh that was him with the camera yeah Yeah, i saw i saw the video i didn't know that was him wow that's nuts yeah that's that's chris just just like (laughs) along the ride yeah that's so hard right back keep going i'll be right back no doubt oh shit that's so hard bro oh my god (laughs) that's how big time he is yeah he's the viral megan the stallion dancing cameraman <laughs> yeah like how, like how, like how do you top that <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> holy shit like um uh, but who but but like who's that whose idea was it to whose idea was it to make it like a fashion show like to like really take the to take the thing that nate was doing with um with like the with like the outfit breakdown it's like i want to make this a fashion show like um i, I think that might have been my i the I think the initial idea that I remember that we were really stoked on was like it being like store window, like it's shot from outside the store and it's like mannequins and then the mannequins kind of come to life and are like performing the songs. But Mm -hmm. that just seemed too ambitious. And then I don't know, I forget. The song was so fashion based that we knew we had to like push it there. Yeah, and I think the the show just ended up being something that we could wrap our heads around doing, but also like so weird, like, <laughs> and yeah, um, yeah. So we had yeah, like we like went over a lot of notes with Chris on like just like actual like fashion show like current footage. We were just watching a lot of like those like youtube re-uploads of like when they live stream like a like a walk and then we try we yeah the staging was like just trying to make it look as like simple so you it wasn't like trying to do a fashion show like concept like it was just like tastefully showing someone viewing like it's a fashion show without yeah. like taking them out of like oh this is how they oh they did this to make me think it's like we were just trying to like get it as like all the set dressings is like not like you're not thinking about that you're just like receiving the info without thinking about how we were doing it just so that then when it became a music video it was like that much more like what the fuck is happening <laughs> right um, yeah, so that was probably where like most of the like effort went into was trying to make the fashion show aspect feel seamless, like it like you weren't thinking about I'm watching them create a fashion show, you're just feeling it on first, yeah, yeah, and then the editing and post too, because I remember like we mm. were like feeling it and that i think in the early stages like the edit was almost like a little too music video and then we were like wait like it was mm-hmm. one of those things where it was like we looked at each other like wait why don't we just edit this just almost just like a a fashion yeah. job and then it was because they already did such a good job in regardless to in regards to how how they shot it i mean having someone like chris on set because it's like parker's gonna come up with all these brilliant ideas and we had our friend really helping our friend will really helping you know make it so we were we had everything we needed to do yeah and it's like having somebody with the camera experience to really like under like to really really understand the execution side it was like 
it really was like let's shoot a fashion show basically you know what yeah. I mean? like and everyone it, that was our first time with a big amount of um extras Oh, yeah, that was like the most expensive part of the video, I think. Yeah. Big amount of extras. And luckily, all the people that were actually in the show, like performing as walking, they were all our friends. So that makes it a little bit easier in regards to, you know, repetition and people getting impatient because, you know, you got all these like. Oh, well, yeah. You got all these. The camera was the hardest part. Yep. We shot that with one camera. Yeah. Damn. And had to do wow. Both yeah. separately. That's what I'm Sweet saying. Seven. So yeah. him, Parker, Parker and Chris were. It's like you have to do the different, you know, it's like anything, you know, you're shooting from multi angles, but mm -hmm. you're really moving around doing it all. And yeah. And with it being like a meet, like we had to really get the timing pretty like consistent just because right. of what it was. I, I mean, that was a, a lot of that video shoot in my, from my experience was spending like a good three, four hours while like other people were setting up the, the stage area just like working with the the model people like over in a side room with like the length of the floor mapped out like with tape yep. and just like trying to get everyone like synced up with the song to like hit all the marks and not yep. be thinking about it too much yeah that was like a couple hours of that i feel like that was the hardest part the extras wow. are they're sitting on their ass and everyone yeah. else is a, as professionals other than that it's like you're rehearsing real timing and we didn't have the infrastructure to do a multi-day thing it was like you know they got there early and parker designated a couple hours to basically get it right wow so. man that's so intense <laughs> like and and, <laughs> and and like just you know, you know like considering that that was for like the big like the big self-title on the label like that's just such a i guess that makes some sort of sense and i just appreciate the way it came out and i just you know like Nate, I, I, I feel like I've told you that before, but just like, I just love, um, I just love the way you lead into your verse with the fucking, fucking Instagram, fucking fit breakdown type shit and fucking the, the Ian Connor shit because fuck Ian Connor. And mm -hmm. you, 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 you like, like, like that song is just so like, once again, I know that's kind of like my word of the day, but it's just like fun to me, you know, like I just it's it's like you it's know, fun I, and sharp and cool. Bland, and shit. But that's like, honestly, like that's so much of what we were trying to do. And and mm -hmm. I think that that song is why in that video, I always say are definitely big indications of of us being pretty big De La Soul fans. But it was like one <laughs> of my favorite times. And one of my favorite examples of us being inspired by something, but by the mentality of something and not by the content, you know what I mean? Because it's mm -hmm. like, it's not, it doesn't mean that like necessarily it's a, just like a video that they did or necessarily the song doesn't sound anything like they did, but it was like about being inspired by somebody else's mentality, but not like stealing their sauce, just like, you know what I mean? Like, and I think I always think about that, you know what I mean? Because obviously like we always talk about how, how important they are to us but we finally hit a stage in our career where we had found we had found out you know that we wanted to do things on our own and that we were going to be inspired by you know the the reason the reasons why people do things and stuff like that and not directly like what people were doing and and how they were doing it and I felt like that was a good a good example one of my favorite examples of us on like a good way to carry your your you know your inspirations on your sleeves without like taking sauce you know what i mean like right yeah no i agree and like and like now that you mention it i never even really made the, like the day lot comparison with that song specifically but i could like that like it kind of has like the that has the energy of like the fucking um the skating song on De La Soul is dead. Like it's kind of like, like obviously it has like they have nothing to do with each other content wise, but like it just has that kind of like five days of work, five days of work, one whole day of play type shit to it. I don't know. Like it just like the Saturday. I, I don't know. Um, but I'm seeing what you're saying, and I think that's tight. Like just you know, like you know, like it's fun, but it's like not you know you know you know like it's you had a thing you wanted to say and you said it in a cool way that like nobody else could have done. Like nobody was making songs about that and nobody really has since, but it was just an interesting way to put that concept. And that shit was tight, you know? Yeah. Thank you. I really appreciate okay. it. 
no of course <laughs> absolutely and like the last like video video i want to talk about before we move on and start to wrap things up um you, you, um, you mentioned knees earlier and like just such a just such like a simple i or not even a simple idea but just like a very like just like a static shot of the two of you just like Ugh. and just like yeah. what um like why <laughs> not even just like why that but like what like where did the idea come from to just have y'all just like sitting with your faces down on a stage with the lights and just to have it be so like si- simple feels like such a bad word to use to describe it but it's just very no, I, like I don't, yeah, Structurally, yeah like, yeah like yeah yeah, so like, so so like, why that for knees? And then of course, you know, like with the with the flashing lights and Grog's silhouette, I, I cried. I'm not gonna lie, I cried the first time I saw that. It really fucked me up. But like, what? Why that for knees? Um. Well, it's I I would say this one is like, and that's why it's, um, it's a lot harder to imagine like looking at that one with some of the like uh uh problems that i look back at like other ones with because it's so it's so at at that point it was so natural Mm. and so much like less outward worrying um on on one level i think just going towards like simpler compositions like uh not trying to like prove too much with like technical displays of like this shot and this and that was something that was like interesting me Mm -hmm. which is like there on one level but then absolutely like on top of that like first and foremost is like this is a song with like your friend who's not here anymore you're are you you're gonna like okay and now when he says this like we're gonna like pull in on like what that's just ridiculous you know right like, yeah um you're not yeah you're not trying to like show off a camera move while he's like saying you know uh <laughs> no it's um, like juice world shit like <laughs> i would know i feel like he's gonna get there because that's honestly like sorry keep going that was something we literally went through like yeah we were unsure about even like doing a video and out of like honestly curiosity because so much of that stuff like I just avoid outright because it's like I don't know I have pretty intense opinions about a lot of the like post-mortem I think we both do like a lot how a lot of that stuff posthumous like releases in like label structures and and how they're like handled especially visually um yeah so out of like curiosity we were like kind of looking at some of those things yeah and you know honestly finding a lot of like like critical information like on like what you you don't want to do bordering on like some of what we wanted to do was almost like directly a critique of that like yeah like Mm. like mm mm-hmm um just like these like yeah it's like a certain like commodity that's like not even being able to be escaped like once you're gone it's just like a a violent thing and so um we were yeah so that the main thing we took away from that that in like a productive sense was that the we weren't going to try to like simulate him for anything like we weren't going to try to like cre- like create this like like the real the, what was there now was the fact that he wasn't there anymore mm-hmm. and that was the only thing that we could like realistically like um emphasize without um overstepping like certain um just like personhood honestly yeah yeah, yeah. um and uh so so 
yeah simpler constructions this like very critical like trying to be very like 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 very like serious and like fearful approach because like like it, that's a scary thing to like walk in like I mean you hear how like I talked about like oh yeah I cringe at this or that like you know like, you can't like you're I don't know you're dealing with something a little more like yeah you, there's a lot of fear and like you don't want to do something that you could possibly like look back on like that given the stakes and like how much it means to you and the there's this obviously there's like a intense like finality to like that moment um so i think with that very serious engagement with how are we going to do this with already like leaning towards some simpler constructions and then also just wanting to like the song is like already the song it's it's pretty like powerful in its own right um and it's a weird one so you want to like do something where people can still like wrap their heads around it as they're first processing it have a song lead mm -hmm. yeah true so we wanted like really to like put people in a space where they're they're yeah mostly hearing the song um for the first time and then that co like in our la i always say like one of the things i love about us like doing the lights ourselves uh for shows is that i think you can like make the music like a little bit louder and i think with the the video we were able to do that too like it's it's very much just like yeah making the song a little louder clearer like structurally um because the lights are kind of helping you through that i didn't even um, think about that yeah that's cool that's crazy well <laughs> yeah um and um yeah, the 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 thing is when we shot it, we we roughly knew that we wanted to have like a shadow element as like just a little bit further emphasis on like absences in the frame. Um and I had like a I, I was pretty like ah this is gonna be difficult. Um, and I had like a rough idea that we were, we tried to do on set, but it, it looked like it was going to work. And then once we lit things and like fog came in, like it wasn't working. So we had to shoot without it. And then Nate was like really, really pushing me after to like try and see if like there was a way to make it work. And I was honestly pretty unconfident. Um, but I gave it a shot and it was like maybe 80 percent there and like mm -hmm. Nate was like very like this is yeah we gotta like yeah like this is it we gotta do that and that was when I brought in kind of like his silhouette um in editing afterwards which that was I'm not gonna like that was a <laughs> that was a weird experience man oh, like man yeah that was a weird experience I I knew that it was like really beautiful like the result but man like when you're like it's a fucking weird thing when you're like does it look better at 80 or 85 percent opacity right now like like but it's like his silhouette like you know what it is yeah i there was like yeah like i would get i would maybe be able to do like an hour of it at a time and then like have to take a break from it because it was just like you would get lost in it and then you would like snap back to what you're actually like trying to dial in and it would like shock you and, and you yeah um but yeah that i that's that's a really scattered but comprehensive uh walkthrough of that the process of making that video i think no i mean it made complete sense and the video dude you honestly the video is absolutely amazing you did a really really good job of the video i'm very very happy with how it turned out and i think that us we did what we wanted to do and we knew exactly what we didn't want to do and and we're always like this and a lot of our music is like this a lot of how we move and what we talk about is like this where it's like we like to do what we want we we like to do things because we know what we don't like to do and that video like parker was saying it was like he already was moving towards a a, a particular 
um, aesthetic that he knew that he wanted to potentially go for with. But there was that. But also with this topic, we knew exactly how we did not want to do this. We knew what we thought was disgusting in regards to video, right? In regards to narrative, it was like we knew what we thought was real. You know what I mean? Like we knew what was real to us and we knew what was was honest to us and we knew that like putting some putting something as it is is like enough you, you know what i mean and i feel like parker was able to do every single thing that we you know it's very easy to talk about what you like and how, and what you don't like and talk about how something should be but that video is like the intangibles in that video are what make it well both literally and figuratively as scary as that sounds but the intangibles in the video are what make the whole entire video and that's just all about execution and and being honest like in your work and i just i'm very very happy with it and i'm very very happy with how it turned out like you did a really amazing job and i think that people are gonna look at that for the rest of forever you know what i mean you did a really yeah. good you did a really good job yeah no nah, i'm i'm a, i'm gonna I'm a agree because like it feels it feels really tasteful but like he's there you know mm -hmm. not and, and and like and like not in a way where um not yeah yeah like it just feels like it's tasteful mm -hmm. and it's subtle but like you notice it and it makes you feel and it's like okay like this is this is how it needed to be you mm -hmm. know like i there was there, like there's never I, I also have a lot of feelings that I've written about a bunch about posthumous albums and how they should and shouldn't be rolled out, which obviously I'm, you know, I'm, I've, I've never been in a position where I've, or I've, well, yeah, I've, I've never been in a position where I've needed to do something like that, but it's just like, there's, mm -hmm. there's definitely a certain way to go about putting forth somebody who's not here anymore. And it's really hard to hit that balance of like recognizing this person's not here no more, but showing them in a way that makes people feel good and not like not like not like watching because like I watched part of the Juice World documentary on HBO Max and like that was just I was like I, we didn't need to see this like what wh why am I watching this right now you know like it's just it just feels like the it just felt like exploitative and this doesn't feel like that you know like it's like obviously I'm I'm closer to this than most people are but like it just uh it really did bring me back to when I first got the phone call from Parker the night that it happened. And I mm -hmm. just like, I went to the park. I went to go get, I've never told this story publicly. Wow. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm going there right now. Um, you called me, you told me what happened. I got like, I had just logged a piece of writing like minutes before you called me, like not even five minutes. I got up, I took a drive to Wendy's. I bought myself a biggie bag and I cried and, and I cried in the drive through <laughs> That was, that was like, it like seeing what happened in these brought me back to that moment. And I was just like, this worked, you know, <laughs> like it worked. It felt, it felt right. It didn't feel like you overstepped and I could tell the amount of work and thought and effort that you both put into it. And that's like, not easy to do like you both said. So mm -hmm good shit i got really heavy i'm sorry <laughs> noriega say right now what would noriega say right now <laughs> i say what would noriega say right now on drink chat? <laughs> make some noise <laughs> <man. laughs> hey, love that shit grogs man grogs is the first person i ever knew that was really like drink yeah. champs, champs. <laughs> and i should have just done it now make some noise. yeah everybody right at the end of it you're like i was in the wendy's drive now make some wendy's <laughs> yeah. yo no nah, man that's real he really he really loved all that type of shit like the big yeah, jams fucking go <sighs> like like really like because it, it's crazy that it was around and then like i guess it, just because kanye went on i guess but it had like right such a it definitely entered some new consciousness. <laughs> oh past. yeah, like nah, like yeah, you know, like the Kanye and the Big Sean shit took it way, yeah. way, way, way over the top, and like yeah. <laughs> that's so wild to think about because like I really because I was talking to my sister about the Doja Cat the race uh, in the racial chat room show and feet thing. My sister had no <laughs> idea that happened. Like so, like it really like, like that was just a reminder of like wow, the internet really does only go so far. 
but yeah. like that because like i thought that was like a supernova moment but like the kanye shit like that's that's just way different and yeah. just like yeah like just talking to him about stuff like that and like when one of the times y'all came to new york i was about to go see Deezus and Mero play at the apollo and he mm. and i were talking about that because he loved Deezus and Mero too and like that was that, that that was just like yeah just yeah just like shit like that just like to see to see how it's all just kind of moved like mm. them and and the drink champ shit i'm not a fan of drink champs the Colts were but, killing like, this year uh, yeah, the yeah. the yo. Colts were killing this year they really collapsed yeah. I know, I know, I know. I know, but still, like, man, I was like, man, Grogsy's, like, going crazy right now. Yeah, man. He's, 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 he's just, the, just making... What was, was... When was the... Wait, was the... That was the end of... When was the Philip Rivers cold season? That would have been... Yeah, that would have still been... Yeah. It was still after, though, because I I, yeah. I would consider it Colts up, Bolts up, because I was like, wow. So now... <laughs> yeah. Philip Rivers on the Colts, so now yeah. and Grogs is like it's Colts up, bolts up, like for yeah, sure. He didn't get to, he didn't get to see you guys because kind of, I feel like even if he was still around, you would have had that would have been like your B team. That would have been Phillip insane, Rivers. dude! Wow, yeah. wow, but, yeah, man. Like, like, like what? Like one of my, I went um I went back and listened to the self titled again, and like right like right after I interviewed you guys for Pigeons about it. It's like I didn't notice the Rip Hamilton reference on "Get the Fuck Up" <laughs> when he's talking about "Fuck it, mascot, I'm so ready to rip him." Like, mm-hmm. like, like I caught that and I texted him, and I'm just like, "You dirty motherfucker!" Like, I'm so mad that I missed it the first <laughs> time and couldn't be like, "Damn, you did that shit!" Like, and just and, and just and just like the just like the little sly like I, I, like between all of you, but him especially, like the little little sports references that he would just like seed in there, just real, just like. You you could just tell he loved the shit, man. Like just I would ugh, catch shit for the first God. time on stage. Sometimes, like I would <laughs> catch shit for the first time, like four <laughs> years later. Like look at it, like yo, you're crazy, bro. Like, <laughs> yeah, man. Like and 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 just um, man, I just um, seeing how much your craft has evolved over the course of the last five and six years, um, and listening to Phoenix and seeing all the attention surrounding it and um just kind of really settling into the fact that like y'all really like 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 phoenix like i'm not going to talk about the basics too much because we've done it a thousand times we already did a whole interview about it anybody listening go read our interview on pitchfork it's very very good if i do say so myself and like but like it just felt like this y'all had arrived in like a in, in like a creative sense and we talked about that a bit too just like y'all really hit at what you had wanted to do and you like weren't afraid to get there anymore mm-hmm. and i um i'm proud of you first and foremost to up for like really getting there and you know like the album has been out for just about over four months let me get like four and a half months at this point you got to tour it a little bit You've had a chance to kind of like get feedback IRL and just kind of like sit with the fact that it's been out in the world and people have been consuming it since September. So like at this stage, like how do you feel about what you accomplished with Phoenix? And like, what do you like, just like, how do you feel about it? Like, do you feel, how do you feel about it? Well, hearing all that, one of the, one feeling is like, that being able to find that feeling of like not caring so much about a lot of like exterior things like it it there's a there's a little bit of like uh not regret but like uh there's something a little bitter and like damn it could have been like this like the whole time maybe Mm. um but then again i i mean you got to yeah i mean even some of the things that maybe look back upon and and you cringe a little bit are like probably things that put us in a position to like be where we're at or to even put out an album like this and people to like 
enough people to be changed by it because the reality is there's a lot of albums that are like just as interesting as ours that come out and they're just the people who put them out don't have a fan base yet and right they circulate in like very small online communities but they don't um they don't have quite like this like wow this is like music of the future impact on people who maybe otherwise wouldn't have heard it that i think mm-hmm. ours has been able to get yeah because of what we had done before mm-hmm. um so i don't know yeah uh but yeah there's definitely i mean it's it's really freeing and like refreshing to to just not even just music just anything just be moving forward yeah for real this mentality yeah for real very yeah no you're right though because i feel like (laughs) i was before i've been very intimidated by how well things have been received and for this one i'm still intimidated but the thing that's very liberating about this one is that a lot of the things that I thought people weren't going to like, people liked. And a lot of the things where I was just like, ah, fuck it, I guess. People liked. And it almost feels like for the first time ever, they actually liked it because of like the mentality behind it and not 100% of like the sounds and the words that were exactly being said and used. And that's super liberating for me because it just feels like I if it was just people really liked it and they liked it for exactly what it was and only that kind of like the floss situation, I would be as intimidated because you're almost like scared to move away from it. You know what I mean? Or if you move away from it, it's a response to it. And but this one, it was like and it's kind of tying back to the, you know, like the jawbreaker video thing. It was like, people liked the mentality behind it and they respected the approach of it. And it was just like, that's something that you can move forward with because it's like, you're not going to move forward with sat like particular exact sounds and certain rhyme schemes and narratives, but you are going to, you can move forward with doing whatever the fuck you want to do and people liking it like for the first and people being open to to wow wow west like that that was like yeah. that, that's that's honestly like that is so liberating and and like parker saying i mean i i don't know if we would have made this if we didn't feel the way that we felt about the self-titled album and i feel like all of it has ha- you know what i mean like maybe it's not how we planned it to be but you know it did happen and it did work into what we did here so coming off of this i just feel so thankful that i feel i personally just feel free and i just feel like okay like i mean who knows maybe it's just because people liked it though that's the thing it's like it could be because people liked it like if people didn't like it uh, maybe we would have bent back the other way but i doubt it i feel like we're so deep into this this game now that it's like I keep on saying it. I just feel like we're so deep into it that I feel like we're not going to do, we can't do anything now unless it's like exciting and challenging to us. Like at that we point. We had accepted that people weren't going to like it. If yeah. anything, I feel like we were I dropped pretty- over it. Like we were yeah. for real though. Like we really didn't think that people I held out hope, but I had accepted that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah cause y'all, cause like, cause like one of you, maybe both of you, like, l- like maybe all three of you, like between you two and Nick, definitely were like yeah we don't know how people are going to feel about this like even before i had heard anything yeah. it was just like <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we we don't really know like this is this we're moving further and further into the into 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 the bramble patch right here and it's like i was ready to see where it went and like i'm happy you brought up wild wild west because like honestly that's the one that's like i liked it when i first heard it but that's the one that i've been going back to the most like, like, mm-hmm. like, I thought it was, I thought it was going to be forest fire or I thought it was going to be, um, what else? What was the other one that really grabbed me? Um, forest fire and knees. Right. But mm-hmm. it's been outside and wild, wild west. Those have been the ones that mm-hmm. I can't stop going back to. And I didn't oh. expect that, you know, right. like that's, yeah, that's, how, I was, that's, that has been like the most shocking that's the one. Yeah. 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 I like, thought that was going to be the one that like we did people out like seven out of 10, 
people starting the album are gonna be like what the fuck is this like indulgent shit and like just stop <laughs> uh but that's been a lot of people's favorite people who i wouldn't expect like to even like the album at all that's been their favorites like right. that was one of our early signs that we were like whoa like people may like this album because we were showing like our friends who, who they aren't musicians or anything not saying that you have to be a musician but our <laughs> friend, you know, like our in our streetwear fr- uh, side of the friend group and everyone was gravitating towards outside and we were just like this is a weird sign like this is <laughs> this actually may be positive like you know what i mean like and then i just people were saying how much they like outside and i'm just like wow we thought this is one for us we thought that was just one that we did for us you know what i mean and mm-hmm. But yeah, no, that was and 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 a big a big light in it, which is why we did it because we wanted to do it. Is Grogs was really into it. He was a big spark and like leaning into it. You know what I mean? So it's like we were we were gonna do this is all here. Yeah, we were gonna do it regardless. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I believe that. Like that's Uh, that's that's yeah. That was probably one of the most heartbreaking reviews that I've I've ever seen even though it was like not that harsh but when someone said that like this is like clearly not the album we intended to make but it's okay that it it is what it is and it's like i don't know that shit pissed me off a lot oh man i i I, I, I didn't like angering yeah i didn't i didn't see that so i i I don't know but (laughs) maybe we shouldn't be like reading them but i i don't know i do i I don't think it's like that bad of a thing Um, right yeah, no, no, no. But yeah, that one like was really upsetting. Eek. <laughs> yeah, it's just I don't know. But I think um I also think it says something that people are gravitating toward that like 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 like, like this album feels this album's really warm to me. Like mm, I'm yeah. like 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 I meant like I mentioned it during our um on the pitchfork shit, but like this album is just like it's really really like 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 it just feels like it it feels like you're just you're just outside of the influence of the sun like you can like see it and kind of feel it a little bit and you're just kind of like floating a little closer to it and it's just like very like it's warm but it's not super it's not like super potent it's just like a warm Mm -hmm. tingle i i I don't know i'm I'm, I'm getting a little abstract Uh, uh, no that's good one of the things that I've always been pleasantly pleased with myself when we were doing album like interview rounds was someone asked us like to describe what was like the the texture of it or the feeling of it or something yeah what you're describing is like a very phoenix specific thing uh well there's other parts of the world but within America I think it's pretty distinct to hear uh like in like the summer monsoon seasons there's like haboobs and they're like very like it's very humid but there's like it's like a dust storm element so it's kind of like if you go outside it's like this like thick humid air it's uh kind of like tingles on your skin because it's like dust you know you have to protect your eyes or whatever right and and it's still hot out because it's like arizona summer um and i feel i don't know that that sounds like kind of what you're you're itching at there yeah you know i didn't say it in those it, it, I didn't say it in those words, but I think, you know, like, I think that's it. And uh, I just think that, like, I just think that I think a big part of that, I think that's a big part of the reason why people are gravitating toward this so much. And it just feels so, like, like, it feels to me, it feels to me like y'all made the album you wanted. Like, like, this was going to happen no matter what. Yeah, you know, like that, that. That's that's that was always clear to me. Once again, I'm, once again, I'm probably uh, I'm 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 in a different position than most people. But I um, but but like people that I played the album for and or, or like been like, hey, check this out. Like they've been like, this is like something. Like people have a hard time describing it, but people are like, this is cool, you know. And I think this is I th- I think it's going to be something important that people are talking about. Like when like the 2020s come to a close, like on some like this like like this was on to something you know i like i don't want i don't want to get too yeah. i don't want to get too congratulatory or anything but i, I but, but like i've no, been thinking about there, that right? a lot like, <laughs> um, <laughs> no, no. I, I mean i hope it like makes like i hope that there's like i don't know not music that sounds like it but a, a little more music approach like it mm-hmm. maybe like 
in bigger circles or maybe just music that we were really like excited about and caught up in is heard a little more right yeah and i think that's really i think that's really important too like y'all 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 work with a lot of really cool people who people don't who, who people might not have necessarily known about and like you're at that level now where like you're putting people on like to shit <laughs> you know like i didn't really know who black midi was before i realized that like y'all uh, done the, see like it, it's, them now. I, mean, I know they're, 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 that's so they're crazy they're so, like look yeah. at you go but you know like i just think um I just think y'all are in a really interesting and cool position and I'm happy that you were able to do this on your terms and like kind of come come, yeah. like, like come into all this renown like and like get and like get interviews at these places and get reviewed by certain publications and certain whoever's like yeah. and you did it your way you know like yeah. that's like, like that's that's amazing you know like in any day and age it would be amazing but to see you really get to like savor that like on your terms just like shit yeah. you know yeah it's way better than having a bread right now like i'd rather i mean we're broke but like but <laughs> that's not but dead ass like i felt like looking back at this with really no regrets and just being like you know what you cringe at a couple songs and a couple of videos that's what we're looking back at that's that's amazing yeah. That's amazing. Like I know plenty of people who are looking back and they got real time regrets on things that they did. And it's like, mm-hmm. I'm very happy that we did things our way. And I think that it, it really has a, a, a lot to do with um, the people that were involved and the people that were surrounding us and us yeah. being a group. And you know what I mean? I, I, it, it, it's a, it's, it, it has a lot to, it has a lot to do with it. And honestly, that's my, like you're saying, that's my favorite thing about this is that we really did it on our terms and we can look back at this, like happy with what we did, you, you know what I mean? Like, genuinely happy with what we did. And that's, I mean, that's honestly a better feeling than anything else. I bet, man. I bet. And thank you. Thank you for making a song about my favorite, terrible Will Smith movie. I appreciate you so much. Of that's, course. Yeah. Uh, yeah like just like yeah. that and the um what'd you say that was just a long there's a long road to get to that uh, the yeah. appreciation of that i i remember always the on the 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 self-titled album tour tour like jazz that was like a jasper and i had like a long discussion about <laughs> both uh uh, what's it, steampunk aesthetics that led into like wild wild west is like such a i don't know it's a it's one of the more interesting movies of, of that size and you know what's funny about you having that conversation with jasper about that is that when i show jasper wild wild west even he looked at me and was like i don't think they're ready for this one <laughs> he, no but not even like in a funny way he's like i don't think people will get will get it at all oh uh, yeah he was like, I don't, I don't, I just don't, I, he, I, I was just like, yeah, I feel you. I, I feel, and that's for him, him to say that that's crazy. Yeah. Well, because- and obviously there's still a few, like, I'm sure there's, you know, a certain number of people who think that they're listening to 5G conspiracy propaganda in a song form. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> when they hear it. But tired of, better bro. than I expected, honestly. Like yeah. more, I think more people like they didn't. They don't like they don't have it figured out. But obviously, that's the point. Um, like th- I think more people like are able to like take it on its terms. Yeah, yeah I've seen more people be like injured reserve. Oh yeah, I tried listening to them, but one of them says the f word, and then everyone's like, "Oh uh, yeah, wow, that's Case to Killer who." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a yeah. very common one. As I like, people, that, yeah, yeah. Well, they say homophobic shit, and I'm, I'm just like, oh man, like people aren't even willing to do like a cut, like one Google before they just outright, you know what I mean? Like, right? Yeah, it's me, man, one of the yeah, best she, in the world. Shout out to Cakes, Jersey's finest. We've never met, but Cakes is Jersey's finest, always and forever. Like. Oh huge 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 fan it's like when um a couple weeks ago that person on twitter tweeted about the weekend album and was like oh like who else has ever made an album based around a radio station before and just like twitter just was just like uh like 
in everyone the last years <laughs> in the last three <laughs> years they have been, i'm not even gonna get too deep into that one yeah like it's just uh, yeah it's just like you 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 would just like you would just imagine the people like like google is your friend y'all like just go do it and then and then don't get mad when people complain like just you are you're on the internet like use the thing like it's not hard but anyway yeah right <laughs> um i don't have any more questions we've been at this for almost probably a little over <laughs> yeah. two hours at this point um you know i feel like i say this every time we talk but just um thank y'all i appreciate your trust um it's been amazing to see your growth um from it's been amazing to see your growth from fucking dentist office and you know like all the earlier stuff to now you know like it it, it like this last couple of months has felt like a watershed for y'all in a lot of ways and um i i'm you know just like as a fan like not you know just like as a fan and as your friend i appreciate you i appreciate you guys even wanting to come on and do this you know like it's one thing to want to come fuck with me over a pitchfork but like to, 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 <laughs> to like come and spend two hours bullshitting about fucking movies and and shit with me is like that's that means a lot so i really appreciate uh, it thank you no uh, no I, 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 I feel like Come on, man. That's easy. I remember Parker hit me like, yo, like, like Dylan's podcast is really sick. And then and then it was I was I'm not going to lie. Like even the people that you were getting on in the beginning, I was like, damn, like we're about to be one of the smallest <laughs> guests on this. It's our boy, like, uh, uh, no, honestly, it's I'm very happy for you. And it's really and it's also just really, really cool. Um, And it's really I like which I think is part of one of your main goals. But I think the reason why people are going to be very refreshed to do this is because these aren't a lot of the conversations that we get to have. You know what I mean? Like we yeah. normally get asked the same questions and um, that's, I think that's what really excites people because there obviously is a like huge direct link between, you know, what we do and film. And then for someone like Parker, you know, some, some of us do both of it, like are in both of those fields. So uh, it's, yeah, it's great, man. I don't think we would be doing any other podcast right now. Thank you. At all. No, like, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> just, just, yeah. That's the that, that's the whole point. I just, I just, I just want like these two. These, I feel like I've said this before, but these two things save my life. And we like we and like I have these conversations with people all the time. And as somebody who kind of came up writing about both, I wanted to find a way to really like examine that relationship with people who I think uh, we all think about this stuff. Like, there's nobody who doesn't like movies, you know, like. Or, or like who, who at least hasn't like experienced one before. And, um, you know, I think um, this, like y'all were people I had been thinking about doing this with before. Like, like when this was like an idea, I was like, oh, they'd be cool to do this with. Like, it was oh, like y'all- Think of Grogs. Oh my God, man. I think, of, I, I was thinking about that earlier today. Like, cause man, one of the, one of the last like movie related, movie TV related things he sent me he texted me the entire series of Dr. Katz because he and I were talking about Dr. Katz and like he found like a YouTube channel that had every single episode of Dr. Katz on it. And I was just like, I would have loved to just fucking just talk to him about Dr. Katz for 20 minutes, you know, like I would have been crazy. But, yeah. um, you know, I know even he'd be proud. Even just silly things like Dexter coming yeah. back like that. Uh, right. Is, like, like, just yeah. like you immediately think of him like. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, man. And, and, and just like everything with like Donald Glover, because he was big on him, too. And like and it was like Atlanta coming. Oh, man. But either way, like, you know, I know y'all miss him. I miss him. Um, I would like to think that he'd be proud of where we're all at. And, you know, just like see, seeing you guys just move has been amazing. So just like, you know, like forget forget anything that has to do with me. Like, congratulations on everything. <laughs> Like you're like just the placements you've gotten, the vision is just there. And yeah, I, I don't know what else to say. Just like, thank you. You know, <laughs> mm. thank you. Mm. Well, thank you. Yeah, I don't, yeah, no, thank you for having us. And yeah, I don't, yeah, that's, yeah. Yo. Thanks for listening. Shout out to y'all for making it this far. And shout out to all the black people listening too, because y'all really impeccable. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and tell a friend to come through next time. One.